Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to a brand new 12 Days of Christmas video. Today I'm focusing on interactive cards featuring art impressions, stamps, and dies. I'm going to be focusing on some of the dies like this Singing Snowman die. This one also requires a 3D pop card template. I just wanted to mention that very quickly, but it comes with all the coordinating dies and then this small die is to be purchased separately, but it's very inexpensive and it can be used for a variety of their stamp sets, which is really nice. I'm also going to be using the snowman shaker and this is a really adorable snowman where his arms shake with the presents. The stamps are a mixture that I'm using today of cling and clear stamps and also I'm using the reindeer as well as the mouse. So I am going to actually be using the action wobblers today to make all of these things wobble. They're sold separately but some of the stamps do come with one so that you can give it a try. You can see here that the stamps come in two sets. So it had the snowman and then the arms separately so you can easily cut those out. They come with coordinating dies for each of the pop-up areas which is also really convenient. Wobblers come in mini as well as large size or the normal size which is the what package that I have here. And the mini came in this bundle for the mouse so I'm able to see how many of my stamps actually require the mini ones and how many of these action wobblers I need to invest in in the future. So as I said, all the coordinating dies are given for the areas that wobble, but they aren't given for the full image itself. So you'll have to fussy cut or stamp directly on your card base. I've gone ahead and stamped and colored all of these. I mainly wanted this video to focus on how to put these cards together and what they look like when they're put together versus the coloring. I don't have my Copic markers here, so I had to make do with my Prismacolor pencils, but I think they turned out really well. I used the guide, the stamp, envelope or piece of paper that comes in the stamp sets always has a picture a full color image so it's never a guess as to what colors you have to color everything but you can get as creative as you want or like me if you want to follow the guides that works too so I'm gonna add all the coordinating dies that come with these and I'm gonna fussy cut the other ones and let's meet on the other side to show you how to put these together so I'll start off with the reindeer. I'm just doing this on a white background just so you can see how they work. I totally recommend putting this on some sort of pattern or a colored sheet of cardstock because it's a bit boring when this card's all done. So just glue your reindeer on there or stamp them directly on your card base and give them a color. And then all you need to do is grab the action wobbler and attach his little booty. Then they they can twist and turn and wiggle. I'm going to go into more detail of how to apply an action wobbler in the next card. No worries. I just wanted to show you this so you have an idea of what the cards are going to look like today and whether this is something you're interested in creating. I always seem to give action wobbler cards and fun cards like this to people I give gift cards to because I always feel like it's a bit of a cop-out gift but I think that at least I put a lot of effort into the card. So I'm grabbing a piece of pattern paper for my next one to make it a bit interesting. I'm using all of the paper that I'm using today comes from the same paper pack. I believe it's from Memory Box and I'll list it below in the video description if I can find it. And I'm just adding them to the front of my bases for more interest. Then for this one, same as the reindeer, it's quite simple. Just simply glue down the snowman and then add an action wobbler on top. I'm going to show you how that works. So action wobblers couldn't be more simple because the adhesive is already on there. All you need to do is pull off the backing and it doesn't take very much time uh, to do that. I didn't find them too hard to take off. I found one side a little trickier than the other, but they come off in two pieces as you can see. So you're going to take them off and obviously the spring goes down towards the bottom. Uh, so the larger part of the spring goes towards the top if that makes sense. And so yeah, it kind of is obvious when you have it in your hand as to which way the wobbler goes and which way the spring goes, if that makes sense. I don't think there's, I don't even know if there's really a wrong way to apply it. Then you just simply stick it directly over top of your images where the arm is already stamped and it creates this wobbler. It's so much fun and the adhesive is super strong so you don't need to worry about needing to reinforce that or anything. It's going to withstand a lot of the wobbling because let's face it I couldn't stop playing with these when they were done. So you can add on your sentiments and things like that. They come each with a coordinating sentiment. You can mix and match them, use your own sentiments, whatever you like. But I think this guy is just so adorable. I love his little smile and the way he wobbles. 
Now the next stamp is the cutest thing ever. So this little Chris Mouse here, this Christmas mouse in his little Christmas pajamas. I couldn't resist using like a red plaid paper for the background so that it kind of matched his little pajamas. And he has a bell, so his tail rings a bell. Some way I have to figure out how to actually make it make noise because it's the cutest thing ever. And this one's super easy. So the bell is not even attached to the mouse when you stamp it down. They're two separate pieces. And the coordinating die comes for the bell itself and it also comes with a mini action wobbler so if you want to get this stamp set I suggest picking up a pack of mini action wobblers as well so also a very cute idea this was him when he was all finished this one here was complicated and f-bombs were dropped and all sorts of things and I'm going to show you how to put it together and I hope I can explain it better than the instructions or at least you can understand how it works with the instructions and my instructions. After I made this, despite all the frustration, I really felt like I was comfortable making a second one once I had figured it out once. It was just a matter of going through it one time. So go ahead and fold yourself an A2 size card base, and this measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then you're going to cut out or die cut that pop up die like it says in the instructions. And this does not come with it once again, it's sold separately. So all you need to do is fold along the score lines. There's some perforated lines there already for you, just two of them. And pretty much it just makes it an, an area that you are going to be able to lay flat and glue onto your card. So I would recommend do not glue it now. Put your snowman on your template first. I'm going to show you how to do that later. And then go ahead and glue it down. That way you don't have to do a little bit of card surgery like me. Now approximately three inches from the top of your card, you're gonna make two half inch slits and I put them a half an inch apart. The instructions say an inch apart, but I find half an inch to be more than fine. Then it's able to kind of give you this 3D pop-up square that kind of can, you can see here, it's a square. The instructions then say to cut a piece of cardstock that measures a half inch by two inch, you're gonna attach that directly on top. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Don't mind that the snowmen are already put together. We're going to go through that in just a second as to how that works. But because I had to do this a little bit of out of order, this is what I was dealing with today. So in order to put your snowman on, as I said, do this before you glue. You're going to save yourself a lot of headaches. The pop-up die itself contains some slits and two arrows at the very top. Also included in the coordinating dies, it adds a couple of slits into your die cut so you can slip in things like the candy cane and the songbook. So each of these just slides into each other, super easy. And don't forget to use the guide that comes in the packaging for the stamp to know how to add these snowmen onto it. So pretty much the largest, tallest one goes in the back, then the two that are kind of together holding hands or kind of arm around each other, and then the one in the middle goes there and he's gonna be holding the songbook. So I'm gonna be starting off with the back and working my way to the front. So this large snowman stamp here, I'm gonna use the slits that are automatically cut into it from the coordinating die. And there are two little arrows in the pop-up die that are facing up towards you. You're going to stick those arrows through his slits and wiggle him down to the base of the pop-up card die. There are different levels of slits on the pop-up card die, if that makes sense, because each one of these is going to hold one of the snowmen, and it keeps them spaced apart from each other as well, so it looks more 3D. Now, it did require a little bit of wiggle, and I assume that is definitely with your cardstock is going to make a difference how easy or hard this is going to be to put down. I personally used colored pencil cardstock since that's what I used to color, so it's quite thin. Next up, you're going to grab the next piece of snowmen here, the ones that with the arms around each other, and you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna wiggle those slits in until he gets to the area where he's going to stay. And then the last snowman here just sits directly behind the arrows. When you have this die in your hand, and if you decide to purchase this die, it'll be totally clear my instructions. It might be just a little hard to see on camera, and I'm going to zoom in when I edit. So lastly, this little guy goes on the front. You can slip his songbook here into him, and then it's all ready to go. 
this is where I decided I had to move my snowmen down a little bit. They were way too high up on the card and would not have worked with my 3D area. So I had to just kind of remove it, which wasn't a big deal, and then just move it down a bit. But this is what I meant about ensuring that you put the snowmen on, I think, before you glue this down is just a lot easier. So I just removed my snowman here, just kind of ripped it off my cardstock. No big deal because the snowmen are going to cover my ripped area anyway. And I added them here to the center of my card. I used a bone folder to kind of help me push that down. And you'll notice that because of that 3D pop card template die, they easily fold flat when you push them off to the side. So at this point, you should have that square cut out as well as that one half inch by two was it two and a half half inch by two inch piece of cardstock and so I'm all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my card flat once just to kind of see how they fit and ensure that my snowmen don't pop out the side and then I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to the back of my little half inch paper and then I'm going to close the card and let that glue adhere to the back of the snowmen so it's pretty easy once it was all said and done. I just found the instructions to be super confusing at first. And as I said, despite the confusion, I now feel super confident after I did it once. So my suggestion definitely would be to stamp out all the items, die cut them, but don't color them. Like don't put in that effort the first time you make it and really just make it two, three times and see if this is something for you. And then you'll get so confident with it that you won't have to worry about ruining any of your coloring or anything like that. Also adding a piece of pattern paper over top also covers that hole in your card base. And then you'll see now how they open up and they're 3D and they're so much fun. Look at these guys. They just form a choir. How cool is that? And the 3D pop card template die also coordinates with several other stamps and dies on the Art Impressions website. So if you do invest in it, it's not a waste just for this one set or anything like that. So there's lots of different ones available if this ends up being your thing. Interactive cards I know are not for everyone, but I personally like them now and again just for a bit of a challenge. And it creates just a really fun experience for the person receiving the card, I find. So those are all the cards that I'm creating today, the different interactive ones. I found the wobbling ones are really great for beginners. If you're an advanced card maker or an intermediate one, you may want to give one of the pop cards a chance. But overall, I absolutely love them. The snowmen on the inside, the little Christmas, and the uh, snowmen with the wobbly arms as well as the reindeer were just super cute and lots of fun to create. Thanks so much for watching, and I will be back with the 12 Days of Christmas throughout the month of November. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.